All right, so I don't understand anything about work. So I've asked Mr. Coverly here, and he's going to, uh, I'm going to ask him some questions about work. Good. And maybe he'll explain, and maybe he won't, and maybe we won't understand at all, and this will be a waste of time. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to say, I've, I've taught work several times, and right. I did, I was a physics student at one point, and I was yep. a calculus student. I really don't know what work is. It, I mean, work, I know what work, I go to work. Right, right. But no. I don't know what physics work Dr. is. Dr. Bardot not understanding work is not Me. a surprise to the rest of the faculty. Okay, yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard about how often I return papers then. Exactly. Yeah. Um, from a physicist's perspective, work is something very specific. It is, um, it is r roughly, this isn't terribly accurate, a force applied over some distance. I keep hearing that. So there has to be a force applied to some object that causes it to change its displacement. It's got to move. Okay. So um, if I just push against the immovable object, no work. No work is being done. That's the story of my life. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's um, what they say. That still doesn't... Can it, so I thought about that a little bit more, and I thought, well, why would anybody think about that? I, I don't understand why you'd even consider such a okay such okay. a thing Be, I'll, I'll come back in a minute and i'll give you the more technical definition of work but but what's cool is if you look at newton's second law and a net force That's causing f some acceleration, equals ma f equals ma and stick in a being a change in velocity over some distance or some time period what you end up with is the work done equals a difference of some quantity based on the beginning of its motion and the end of its motion there's some quantity, bleh, that changes when you do work. So that's why we care about work, is because this quantity is dependent on that amount of work. And the quantity turns out to be kinetic energy, okay. one half mv squared. All right. So we kind of care about work because it tells us what's happening to the kinetic energy of the object. Uh, one question I had about this, too, was the concept of work prior to the concept? Do you have any idea about the history? Of, I'm going to ask you questions you may not know yeah, the right. answers to. But was the concept of work prior to kinetic energy, or were they contemporaneous, or do you have no idea? I, I don't know. Okay. My guess is contemporaneous, because okay. as you kind of point out, what, they're sort of the same. why do we care? Are, are they the same? They're not the same. Well, they're not the same. They're not the same. But, but if you take work apart from its context with energy, it, it doesn't mean anything. I don't okay. know why anyone would have ever thought about work without multiplied energy. force by distance right. with, without caring about energy. Okay. So can I give you the more technical definition? Yeah, absolutely. So the technical definition uh, is the dot product of the force vector and the displacement vector. Mm, luckily, we're going to be constantly dealing in one dimension. Okay. And so that dot product will just be product. Oh, in one dimension. Oh, okay. I think I think basically we're going to be moving things in okay. one dimension. Fine, and you can always break and it our down. And our force, dimension. well, our force, and our and our what will happen for us and the problems we're going to do is force and and displacement vectors will be okay. parallel. Okay, and if they're not, you just take the parallel or anti-parallel component right. of the force vector, and that's all you care about. Right, so. okay. Uh, that's what the dot product so, is. So, right, and so then the way I we write it in physics is it's force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the two, Right. which in your case might either be 0 or 180 all the time. Right. What would be like the ultimate everyday life example of work? Is there one? Our book does springs and, you know, launching humans into space. Right, right. Um, There's this cool picture of a guy lifting up uh, dumbbells, too. Yeah, that's exciting. Th there's not a, a prototypical example. No. Um, the one that I use is if I am standing in my driveway shooting arrows into the target in my garage. I've got... I pull back on the bow and I've got an arrow here with no kinetic energy at all. And clearly to get it to go into the garage, I need to give it some kinetic energy. Fine, how do I do that? How does it gain kinetic energy? Oh, okay, we gotta, you got to do work on it. All right, so what is it that can do work on this? Oh, well, the string now can push on it over some distance, not distance from here to the target, but it's applying that force while the arrow is moving forward before it leaves the bow. That's a really good example for me. That, okay. that really clarifies lots of things to me because uh, so much I think what I see is that work is then a way of dealing with forces applied over long periods of distance clearly but also in my mind then time plays right. some sort of role 
and and therefore most of my other physics understanding all have to do with sort of instantaneous changes of things. Yes. And so this is work is maybe a way of not having to deal with that, always having to deal with instantaneous transmissions right. of force and energy. And and it's helpful in another sense too because often we deal with hello Andrew. Um, we also we usually deal with constant forces because that gives us constant accelerations and therefore we've got sort of simple problems. But in the case of my bow, it's not a constant force. Uh -uh. You've got a big force, and then as the arrow goes forward, the force gets less and less and less. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? Well, one answer is take the integral of the thing, force right. over the, over distance. Um, but, but if you know sort of the starting kinetic energy and the ending kinetic energy, that tells you how much work you did, even with a changing mm -hmm. force, a non-constant force. That's the antiderivative there. Yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, what's Is there a difference between antiderivative and the integral? No, I meant, well, that, but you just described the, the fundamental theorem of calculus there. Okay. We could do the integral or we could take this difference. Oh, right, okay. Right? Okay. That, that, you've just described the, the fundamental theorem of calculus wow. there. Cool. Uh, what's subtle about understanding work in physics? I say work in physics. Since what's subtle about Is it? Is there something subtle? Um, what do people make mistakes with? Th they make mistakes with not dealing just with the piece of the force that's in the direction of the motion. I see. So if I've got a box and I'm pushing it across the floor, I generally don't get down on par with the box and push it like... You know, You've never seen me try to push a box. <laughs> I push down and sideways on it. Right. And so you can think about Because you like force. to waste energy or something exactly. like that. Exactly, right. You like to um, create friction. Or I could take a rope and tie it to it and yeah. pull it that's kind of up and at some angle, which right. would be the better way to do it. Absolutely. Um, so if I do it, if I pull on it, I'm kind of doing two things. I'm pulling up and I'm pulling sideways. Right. And the up and down piece is doing no work. Exactly. Um, it's only the sideways piece that does it. Which maybe you won't run into if you're dealing with We're just one We're not going to deal with that. Excellent. Thank you so much for being here in my office. And that was actually really good. Thanks.